are three FAFSA tips for independent students. Hi everyone, I'm Tina Steele, the FAFSA guru, and if you like what I have to say, be sure to subscribe to my channel by clicking the link below. If you're an adult student heading back to college for the first time, financial aid can seem a bit overwhelming. Maybe you've never been through the process before, or it's been a number of years since you've attended college and things have changed significantly. So I'm going to give you three tips that will help you maximize those financial aid offers and make sure that you don't make any mistakes on the FAFSA. Tip number one, if you're divorced or separated. If this is the case for you, it's very important that when you fill out the FAFSA, you count only your income for the prior year and not your spouse's. This does not have to be a legal separation. You just need to be living in separate households. And if you filed a joint tax return with your spouse in the prior year, it's really important that you do not use the IRS data retrieval tool to import your taxes because what's going to happen if you do that is it's going to pull both of your income information. So you you want to bypass that feature and enter only your income that was reported on your taxes. And if you didn't have any income, then you would enter that as zero. I see so many students make mistakes when it comes to this, and it can cost you thousands of dollars if you're counting your spouse's income when you don't have to. Tip number two, make sure that you do not report your retirement accounts and the equity in your primary home. This is another mistake I see a lot of students make. They list this as an investment. You are not required to report these things on your FAFSA. For the question that asks for the net worth of your real estate or investments, you would only include real estate if it is something you own other than your primary home, such as a rental property or vacation property or something like that. And then lastly, tip number three, reporting special circumstances to the financial aid office. This is so important and so many students are not aware of this. When you fill out the FAFSA, you are using prior year tax information on the form and your current year situation could be significantly different for whatever reason. Maybe you lost a job, you or your spouse lost a job, you have significant medical or dental expenses, you're supporting an elderly parent, or you had significant home repairs or something that happened as a result of a natural disaster that is not taken into consideration on the FAFSA. So if there's a significant financial change in your household for the current year, it's really important that you notify the financial aid office Office at each college you're applying to about this. You're not going to notify FAFSA because remember, you put your prior year's income information on that form. What you need to do is contact the financial aid office directly at the college, let them know about these special circumstances, and then what they will likely do is send you a form to fill out letting them know exactly what these circumstances are. They can then use this new information to recalculate your expected family contribution, which could get you additional financial aid. So there you have it. I hope that helps. And to learn more about the programs and services that I provide that can help you navigate the overwhelming financial aid process and maximize your financial aid offer, be sure to visit my website, thefafsaguru.com. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah.